Good morning, rest in the world. Welcome to your review video for Tuesday, November 25th uh, in this Thanksgiving week. This morning, uh, our uh, conversation over breakfast uh, centered around uh, the events of World War II, uh, trying to understand that conflict uh, both in relationship uh, to World War I, how it is that the Treaty of Versailles and the way in which World War I was concluded contributed directly to the outbreak of World War II, uh, and then also trying to understand uh, both something of the course of events in the war and uh, its larger significance in terms of, uh, of grasping the way in which it's going to, to shape uh, the world after. Uh, so I think if you're going to take away a, a, a few things, uh, here's what I would concentrate on. First, uh, the reality of this as a, uh, as a truly global war, uh, and we saw that even in the build-up to the war, there are events in China, or Manchuria, uh, events in Ethiopia, as well as in Europe that are sort of part of the steady build-up uh, to power, uh, or build-up towards the war. We saw also uh, the ways in which sort of Adolf Hitler is able to take advantage of both German bitterness and to a certain extent Western guilt, uh, especially British guilt, uh, in building power for himself uh, by insisting that Germans had been mistreated uh, and deserved an opportunity to sort of rebuild the greatness of their state in the lead up to World War II. Uh, and then uh, we turned uh, to the events of the war itself and understood that uh, the first two years of the war, between September of 1939 uh, and uh, the summer of 1941, are really a, a series of triumphs, uh, both for Germany in uh, the European theater of the war uh, and for Japan uh, in the Pacific uh, theater of the war. And that brought us uh, then to the Atlantic Charter, to this mutual declaration of Roosevelt and Churchill uh, trying to explain uh, their war aims, even though, of course, America had not yet formally entered the war. So we talked a little bit about uh, what the message is that they're trying to convey, a little bit about why they're trying to convey it and, and to whom they're trying to convey it. And, and what we saw was that there were a lot of layers, uh, but that in essence, it was a message that tried to differentiate themselves from the powers of Nazi Germany and Imperial Japan, claim a kind of moral high ground that might inspire their own uh, people, perhaps inspire those who are on the fence to stay uh, with them. But it also casts a very particular vision of a world beyond the war, uh, one where that respects self-determination, the ability is of peoples to have their own governments and to be settled in their own uh, sort of peaceful environments. And it's that message uh, that is going to become the crux of the conversation in the years after World War II. It's that sense uh, that Britain and America and the Western powers have committed themselves to uh, a world of self-determination um, and independence that's going to be most directly challenged both in the context of the Cold War and in the unraveling of empire. Uh, the two themes that we'll pick up uh, in the week uh, after your return from Thanksgiving. Have a great break, everybody. See you next Tuesday.